Hey guys, Keith from Keyland, and today we're talking about a new data stream which is coming off our pill hydrometers. Now, some of you guys already have noticed it, mentioned on forums before. If you've got the pill paired with one of the other devices like a wrapped chamber, a wrapped temperature controller, or glycol controller, you probably will see this type of data pop up on the display of that device if you've got this in Bluetooth and it's paired with one of those other control devices. One of the awesome things about the wrap platform, which we really haven't taken you know, full advantage of, is the fact that we're one of the few manufacturers of this hardware where we control both the manufacturing of things like these floating hydrometers and then we also manufacture other devices that can actually change the temperature of the fermenter itself. So things like the temp controller and glycol controllers and chambers and stuff like that. So we are in the perfect position to really um, you know, take advantage of this new data stream which is coming off the pill called Gravity Velocity. So you're probably asking what is Gravity Velocity and how does it actually relate to my fermentation situation? Well, the reality is it means that we can have much smarter automation and smarter profiles which you're basically going to get that fermentation process finished quicker, but also means that we're going to be able to make sure we maintain a certain level of yeast activity throughout the whole fermentation process. What I mean by that is firstly, the pill itself here. So if you go into AP mode and look at the settings, so you know if you've uh, got a pill, what you either need to do is put it onto the wireless charger and that'll kick it into access point mode for uh, it basically stays on for about 10 minutes once you've done that. Or if you've got one of the older pills, not Wi-Fi charging, just make sure to plug in the USB Type-C cable and that'll get into access point mode. Once you're in the access point mode, just go into the settings there and you'll see in there you've got um, gravity velocity measurement time and that can be set anywhere from six hours to 12 hours, one day, two days or three days. Look, my personal preference is to use the one day figure. And what that essentially means is when you've got it set in one day, for instance, it'll look over the last 24 hours, take the hundreds and hundreds of readings uh, over that 24 hour period, it automatically will delete the outliers. So there's a bit of smarts on here to do that. So if you've accidentally slammed the fridge door or something like that, or you've moved the fermenter, for instance, those outliers will get deleted from the graph. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll look at all the other figures in that, uh, you know, in that gravity data, and basically it'll fit a a slope to that to that uh, one day or 24 hour period. Now, once it fits that slope, it can see how many points per day, uh, or essentially the the speed of that uh, you know that gravity dropping, and and attribute what's called a, a points per day. Uh, gravity velocity figure. So that's what gravity velocity is. Essentially, it gives us the number of points per day movement that you're gonna see in a 24 hour period. Now, irrespective of if it's uh, if it's got six hour averaging or even three, day, three hour averaging in that time period that you're selecting in the settings, it always gives you the figure in the points per day. So even if it's three day averaging, it still states it, obviously divides the uh, number by three, giving you a, a, a per day or per 24 hour average gravity velocity. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's great, but how can I actually use that figure? Well, the reality is it's the perfect way to trigger certain profiles. So look, a real favorite profile that I've got is um, you know as the gravity velocity drops below 15 points, I start stepping up the temperature accordingly. Now what that does is it means that I can use a yeast and not have any idea of that fermentation, how it's gonna, how fast it's gonna ferment out, but I can make a robust profile which will look after that process for me. Now if I didn't have that and I, had, and I was using a sort of old school method of making a temperature profile, what I would do is set like a certain number of days at this temperature, gradually ramp it up over a period of number of days and then get into a dice or rest that way. But the reality is you don't actually know if the yeast has got to that stage, you know, before, you know, too late or too slow, if you know what I mean. So one of the problems with that is, for instance, let's say I try to step up into a diastole rest too late. You know, by that stage, the yeast activity may have already started to plummet. Let's say I've got a really fast acting yeast or the conditions are really good and I've got lots of yeast, nutrient and oxygen in that initial aerobic fermentation. The yeast may have kicked off way faster than I expected. And then by the time I get to my diastole rest, uh, I don't know, four days, five days or a week later, the yeast may already start to slow down and go into a, a sort of level of dormancy, which means it's very difficult to rouse that back up into the diastole rest at that period. You know, conversely, let's say I was going to step into a crash chill too, too early. Let's say I had my fermentation profile and made it a little bit too, too short, and I was using the old school method of just using you know, time and temperature. 
I might say, oh, look, after 10 days, the process should be finished, then I'm gonna crash chill. What a disaster that could be, because I could crash chill, meaning um, you know, I'm basically chilling the fermenter down and I haven't reached terminal velocity yet. So if I was still fermenting at that stage, you know, it'd be very, very difficult to recover a batch of beer, which is already crash chilled, warm it back up again, and then get it to finish off. It would be virtually impossible uh, in many instances to, to do that. So really what gravity velocity enables us to do is for instance, set the number of points per day instead of time and say, look, when the points per day gets down to 15 points per day, then start stepping the temperature up and ramping it up into my dice or rest. Or if once the points per day gets below, say one point per day or two points per day, then you can go into, you know, for instance, crash chill or something like that, or zero points per day for that matter, go into crash chill. So, um, you know, what you can do is set up really robust, smart profiles, having never used a yeast before and get that beer to stay in a certain, you know, level of activity, making sure that gravity is coming down the best way and stepping up that temperature in the most ideal way. Now that means that we can get through those uh, you know, fermentation times faster and uh, it means that we can get a better result in the end. So let me show you how to set this stuff up and how to set up an awesome gravity velocity profile. Okay, so as you can see, we've done some major updates to the uh, the portal here, and basically it has a heap of new features in here which include this gravity velocity. So this is a fermentation profile I've been using for about 12 months now, so it's been tried and tested for quite a while. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make this profile public with this switch here, so you'll be able to download this yourself, and hopefully you can think of a much more attractive name to save it into your own library. So I've got Keys Hazy Auto Profile Gravity Velocity Trigger, a bit of a mouthful there, but you can download that one and come up with a bit of uh, so this profile essentially I've been using uh, with various different kind of hazy yeast. I've been doing some neepers and stuff like that. As you can see, it's got a 14 degree dry hop step here as well. And essentially what I've got is three gravity velocity steps, um, basically, uh, which are step two, three, four, and five here. So how this works is, well, I've got an aerobic fermentation. Now look, for all you know, good beers, you want a good active aerobic fermentation. So in that aerobic stage, aerobic meaning when there's air available or oxygen, essentially uh, the yeast cells are gonna populate uh, to a much larger population of yeast. So as long as you've got oxygen and um, yeast nutrient in there, it basically is gonna grow a much larger population of yeast. But the most important thing is during this aerobic fermentation, this is where a lot of flavor are generated. So I wouldn't use gravity velocity for this first step. I generally still have temperature and time in this first stage of a fermentation profile. So look, I like a fairly clean ale, so I'm fermenting at 18 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, that's really allowing those hop aromas to come through and doing this for three days. So look, I would still do that for the 90% of um, profiles that you're making with gravity velocity in there. I would still not use it until you know the second or third or fourth steps. Um, the other reason for this is also, as I was saying before, the gravity velocity is taken over an average period. So you've got, for instance, a one day or two day average. And if you only just started the fermentation, you're not gonna have a very good average either. So there's a second reason why you wouldn't use gravity velocity in the first step of a fermentation profile. Anyway, so after that first three days as, uh, as elapsed and I've got you know that yeast in that very susceptible period where it's creating a lot of those, um, that ester production or that getting that uh, clean profile or whatever it is that I'm trying to create, jumps into the next step, which is gravity velocity. As you can see here, I've got this set at 20 degrees Celsius and essentially what I've got is go to the next step when the gravity velocity is greater or less than, and then under here I've got less than, and then 15 points per day. So that's uh, basically if it's changing by less than 15 points, so one, uh, you know, uh, you know 0.015 in gravity points, that is. Um, so if it's changing by less than 0.015, uh, you know, specific gravity points per day, then this step will essentially activate and start to push that temperature up to 20 degrees Celsius. Now, if you've got a super fast yeast, then well, the beauty about this is it may step through these really fast, but if you've got a slow yeast and it's just sort of, you know, ticking along pretty slowly, then we'll go through these steps, um, you know, uh, you know, at a different pace. So the beauty about this is we're not setting a specific number of days to when to do this. It's more so if the yeast is starting to sort of slow down and peter off, it kicks that temperature up to say, hey, wake back up, make sure you, you dry out completely, which is the nice thing about these gravity velocity steps. So as you can see, gravity velocity step two, 
Um, target temperature 22 degrees, and this once again is when the gravity velocity is less than eight points per day. And then gravity step uh, four, um, there we go, it's 24 degrees Celsius, and this basically activates uh, when the gravity velocity is less than one point per day. So I've still got a manual step in here. So as you can see, the next step after that is check gravity. And um, as you can see here, it's 24.5 degrees Celsius. And this activates as soon as this previous step finishes. So basically when it gets below um, you know, one point per day, it goes into this check gravity step. The reason why I've also put this in here is because I don't wanna step to the dry hop step unless I've actually added the dry hop. So for this reason, I've actually got this step where it sends an alert. So if I go into this alerts tab here, you can see it alerts here and it actually sends this to my mobile phone, check gravity now, add hops if F FG is reached. So I get this uh, mobile phone push notification. So if you've installed the app, app, or app whoop, the wrap app on your mobile phone, you'll get this push, push notification pop up um, and you'll say it's ready to add hops. Unfortunately, this is one step manually. I have to come over to the mentor and, and, and click this button. But the reason I've done that is because I simply haven't thought of an automatic way for you know the wrapped system to drop hops in via the hop bong into my fermenter. So that's still one manual thing, unfortunately, I have to do in this particular profile. Um, and as you can see, I've got this uh, hop step in here where it sits at basically 14 degrees for two days. And this is automatic, so it basically, essentially, you know, that's the hop is infusing through the beer at that stage, got usually a little bit of enzymatic activity at that 14 degrees Celsius. And then it goes into a crash chill. So target temperature, zero degrees for two days. And then I also get an alert when the step stops beer is ready to keg. So pretty much that's it. So look, I think this new gravity velocity feature is gonna change the way that a lot of you guys at home think about, you know, creating profiles, making beers. It means for a lot of home brewers, you're gonna make beer faster. So typically, if you're at a brewery, they have somebody, you know, managing this process, you know, full time. They're coming in every day and marking down how many gravity points has dropped the previous day and they do this type of stuff manually. But obviously that's not really, you know, feasible for somebody at home. You've got jobs, you're doing other stuff you're busy. Um, so gravity velocity will really help us make these really cool automated steps. And it's something that nobody's ever seen before. So I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with it and how you guys use it and make, you know, even more automated profiles than what I've done. So um, that's pretty much it for gravity velocity in a nutshell. Well, hope you enjoy using this awesome new feature with this data stream coming off the pill. Make sure to uh, also update the firmware. So go onto your pill, go into those settings, connect it to your Wi-Fi so it can update the uh, firmware on the device. Of course, that's necessary to use the latest features. And of course, if you guys want us to do anything else, or you've got any other feature requests, put them in the comments below, or the other place is we've got actually a wrapped GitLab, which you can comment in as well. So I'll put the link in the video comments as well. Lastly, join our Facebook homebrew community group. We've got heaps of guys like yourself sharing tips and tricks on how to get the most out of our products. We've also got a wrapped users group as well. So Facebook group for that, if you wanna talk about wrapped specific products and uh, stuff like that and of course if you've got any other ideas that you want to uh, contribute in any way always contact our team we'd love to hear from our customers anyway that's it make sure to hit subscribe and notification bell bottom right hand corner here do it now so that you get that way you get notified as soon as those new videos land anyway that's it see you guys next time bye